Hi, it's Leslie Rogalski here, creative director for The Beadsmith, and today I am playing with symbol metal fashion elements for gem duos. Ta -da! So I have a few little samples to show you. The, the thing I want to make for you today is the pair of earrings, though, because these endings are absolutely the best. They really fill in a niche, a much needed um, component in order to work with the lovely elegant geometry of gem duos. So I'm going to make a little starburst of gem duos and use one of the substitutes. And then I'm going to use an ending called the Vani 3. You can see there's three sections to it with a little loop that I've attached a, a post earring to. So I'm going to take you through that whole thing today, but let me show you some of the other things that I, some eye candy. Okay, from Leslie A. Pope, my wonderful partner in crime here at the Beadsmith. Uh, here's a Vanny 4. So you can see there's four sections to it and the gem duos, the, the component, the element is made for the gem duos just to fit right in there. Look at that. Isn't that stunning with true twos and matte backlit? I think they're either petroleum or spectrum gem duos. Yummy! We also have a fabulous pair of earrings from one of our Beadsmith Inspiration Squad members, Joanne Zamet, who lives in Malta. She's used the Vani 4 and also extended the earring beyond the finding. I mean, simple, right? But look how cool that looks. And she has just enriched this earring so much with the bead substitutes with the, um, I think these are Plaka. Um, placa bead substitutes. Just gorgeous. Plus, she's used the single ending, which is just a gem duo shaped element with a loop on it, and added two of them in order to connect to this other little component. It, it's just it's just fabulous the way these are engineered to serve this purpose. Now that said, a lot of us are playing with these that are initially designed for certain beads in other ways. But I'm going to stick to the basics for you today. This pattern will be available eventually. It's in the throes of. Here's another way I've used that single ending the uh, Sikia, it's called. And I have bead substitutes, and I also have sides. Do you see these little sides here? They're called uh, Mitakas, and these happen to be in silver plate. And again, with the gem duos, these are silver splash gem duos. Very simple little snowflake pattern, circular pattern, and just jump ringed on a chain to make a pendant. So. And by the way, these just came out on my bead mat today. There you go. All right, let's see, let's get started. So I was actually hoping to be able to watch this on my laptop, but I can't figure out how to bring it up on my screen. So I'm just gonna watch my phone and uh, show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, so you're gonna start with five gem duo beads and a gem duo substitute for a total of six and you're just going to I sewed them in a circle and knotted it and then I revert so I'm coming out here and I've knotted my working thread and tail together already and now I've threaded my tail on another needle and I'm just going to weave this back in around the existing thread path. Right now, these are just sewn together around the inside. So you're gonna sew them together in a circle, knotting your working thread and tail. Thread the tail on another needle. 
and just weave it two or three beads away from the knot. These don't have a lot of uh, weight or tension on them, so you don't have to worry about security. This is secure enough. And I'm going to trim that tail. Make sure you don't trim your working thread. Just like that. And put that aside. Okay, where's my needle? All right, so I have my working thread and the needle came off. Here's my thread tip since I have a chance to show you again. You're going to flatten the end. I'm using fire line and you're going to pull it down until it's like a poppy seed between your thumb and forefinger. Then you're going to bring the eye of your needle to the thread. And there you go. Pull a little bit. Oh, and I started with about 18 inches of thread, which was, you know, plenty for that. So let's see. Okay, hi everybody who's watching. Cora, Lily, hi. Okay, so my thread is now coming out where the knot is. Now as a general rule of thumb, you don't ever wanna start stitching from your knot. You wanna work your way through a couple beads so there's not that pull on the knot. So I'm just coming up from the inner hole and I'm going to step up by sewing through the outer hole of the Gem Dua Substitute. And by the way, before you use any two hole beads, make sure to check to make sure both the holes are open. So here I am, and I'm gonna keep this earring here so you can see. What I'm going to do next is attach the top two beads that fit inside here. But I'm going to do it one at a time and work my way around so that this component actually gets done all at once. So the next bead I pick up is a gem duo and I want to sew it through what's going to be the inner hole like this. Now make sure your gem duos are face up. You know they have a flat side that's the, the back and the faceted side that's the front. So I picked up a gem duo through what's going to be the inner hole and now I'm going to start to create the little outline. I'm using size 15 seed beads and true two millimeter fire polish just like that was in Leslie's bracelet. And I'm going to be using gold plated AB here. So I'm going to pick up a true two and a 15, and I'm going to start to work my way around the earring or the pendant, whatever you decide to make it. Okay, now I figured out that between the top two, I only needed one true two, between the top two gem duas, I only needed one true two and a 15, but between the rest that are going around the points, I'm going to have a 15, a true two, and another 15 in order to make it sit flat. So I'm going to pick up a 15, a true two, and a 15, and sew through the next outer hole. And I'm going to do that all the way around till I get back to the next to the last one and then there's a, another little part about adding that last gem duo on the other side of the symbol substitute. Get in there, the 15. So I'm hoping that by taking you through this whole thing, you can come back to this Facebook post and follow it step by step and make an, an earring or a pendant. Okay. Now you'll notice that I'm making this first before I attach it to the gem duo ending, right? That's my way, it seems like, by having a piece of beadwork already completed or semi-completed, it makes it easier, in this case, than starting right from the symbol finding. But you know, this is part of what you do when you play with your beads. You need to find the way that works for you. Some people will start right from the finding. Hey, Kansas, I hope you're having good weather out there. Someone from Kansas tuning in. 
Thank you very much. New Jersey is lovely weather today. Okay, now I'm back up at the top and I'm ready to add just one 15 and a, gem, and a true two and the next gem duo. So I'm going to pick up my 15 and the true two. I'll put this down so I can show you here. And you wanna make sure that your second gem duo is face up so you string it properly. Just take a look, make sure that hole is open. You can see how quickly these will come together. Thank you, Kelly. Hey, Maria. Thanks for tuning in. Another partner in crime here at the Beadsmith. Okay, look, I'm going, so I have these strung. Now I'm going to go through the outer hole of the symbol substitute. Get in there. And I'm gonna go through the side gem duo. So here's the thing. I wanna try as much as I can to hide my thread when I have to step up from one hole to the other. So instead of going up the side to get out to the top where I'm gonna be attaching it to the um, Vanny 3 binding, I'm actually going to sew all the way around the beads I just added so I can come out on the inside between these two beads where when I step up, you're not gonna see the thread as much. So there's, there's just sort of a little tip when you play to try different thread paths in order to keep your work looking as clean and neat as possible. Now I'm using black thread here. Um, you can choose um, closer matching color if you want. Uh, I use black mostly so you guys can really see what I'm doing. So I'm just following the existing thread path, sewing through the gem duos, the 15s, and the true twos again it really comes together quickly hey Laurie it does come together quickly and of course I'm taking my time trying to show you guys how to uh, how to do this whoops sorry I have to figure out how to be able to watch this on my laptop when I'm doing it for you and I'm sewing all the way around here we go so I'm gonna put this down. I actually had this stepped out a little bit all the way around and I came out on the inside here and then I stepped up. So now my thread is coming out the side of the gem duo and my finding, let's see if I can bring this in a little closer for you. The finding is going to sit right like this, the symbol. So I have come through that side gem duo and from the inside out, I have sewn through the Vanny 3. Now my little trick for going back through the same hole without losing your stitch is to string another bead. So I have strung a little 15 like just a little pico bead. And I'm gonna sew back through the finding and all the gem duos, all three parts of the Vanny three. There we go. And so when I pulled it tight, you can see that that little 15 there keeps the thread from going through right there. Let's see, I'm gonna take this down a little bit. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna pick up a 15 and I'm gonna sew back into the piece. And please, do you see how I'm turning my piece all these different ways? Do that when you work in order to get the best access for uh, whether you're left-handed or right-handed or you work vertical or horizontal. So I have a 15 and I'm gonna sew back into my piece 
Now again, I don't want the thread to show on the outside, so I'm coming through just into the middle. And I'm going to sew around the existing thread that I just sewed through, and I'm going to make a little half hitch. So this is going to be a little tricky to show you guys, but the thread that ran through this way, I have my working thread looped around it, and I'm going to sew back through that loop, and it's just going to make a little half hitch to help to secure the thread. So look, it's done. All I'm doing now is securing the end thread, and because there's not a lot of tension on this piece, I can now sew my thread back, my needle and thread back into the piece. I'll turn it around this way so I can get access. And just sew my thread back in where it's hidden. Come on. <laughs> there we go. All right, now I'm going to check on the back and I can see that it's just come through the finding and that is fine with me. I'm going to trim it. Voila. All you have to do is add your ear wire and I have one right here. So I'm going to open up my little hook. Will that fit through there? No, so I have to put it through this way. Okay. There we go. And there we go. There's an earring. Now, if you wanted to make a pendant or a necklace, you just attach a jump ring. You can string it on a cord or a chain. You can make a lot of them and make a beautiful collar as they're laid out. So, any questions? Pretty fun, right? And look how different they look just with the colors. Now, Symbol metal fashion elements. Right now I'm showing you the antique silver and the gold plated. We also have all of these components in antique brass and rose gold, which I couldn't lay my hands on for today's Facebook Live, but I guarantee you'll be seeing them in the future. So you can find symbol metal fashion elements from the Beadsmith at your favorite bead reseller, along with all our other fabulous beads, tools, and supplies, right? So I love you, and we love beads. This is Leslie Rigowski for The Beadsmith saying thanks for watching. See ya!